Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome into the Gramlick and MacLean podcast, presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Gramlick and MacLean. It is Florida State Miami week. It's actually kind of a rivalry week, a lot of ways when you look at nice. Duke, North Carolina. Nice. Um, Clemson, Georgia Tech's a little bit of a rivalry, we say sometimes. So <laughs> we've got some rivalry games this week. But of course, Florida State Miami is the biggest one, Mac. And we're excited to talk with JT in this episode. Come on, finally get our quarterback. We get him on the That's show right. here. Uh, you'll hear me say this to him in a second. But you know, there, there were so many weeks, Kelly, where I was just like, should we go after Jordan? I know. We no, would always debate. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait for Miami or Florida. We'll wait for one. Maybe we'll get him back on uh, here in a couple of weeks. But he, he's such a great young man. Always enjoy talking with him. He he is the like perfect model of what you want for your team, the way he talks about everybody. I try to get him to talk about himself and literally just goes on and talks about everybody else. I'm like, no, Jordan, I want to talk about you. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's a great attribute uh, and, and just an amazing quarterback who is having a fantastic year. Uh, so we we love this conversation. Really good. Big shout out to Derek Satterfield for making it happen. And of course, JT uh, for giving us his time. So before we jump into the episode, real quick, Thanksgiving is here, people. Ingles has a message. Check it out. This is so beautiful. I don't know how you do it. We just got this pipe from Ingles. Well. manage Bye. happy thanksgiving from ingles jordan travis our guy man I've, I've been waiting on this game now listen we could have had you on a hundred other times leading up to this season but i wanted this one i wanted miami uh just because i know what this means to everybody so the Knolls are rolling undefeated number four in the country right now how we feeling my man uh we feel amazing um obviously when you're winning football games uh, the energy is great around the program everyone's positive but it's another opportunity this week to go out and just show what we are and show who we are. And let's go play our best game. We still haven't played our best game yet. So let's go put everything together and focus on us. Because at the end of the day, everything's about us. Um, we're, all we're, got, we are, we're all we got. We're all we need. And we live by that for sure. Yeah, you talk about focusing on this week, and we will. We will get to Miami. Uh, you also mentioned that you guys haven't played your best game yet. Mac and I have been saying that as well. You've been close. I think maybe the second half against LSU was uh, pretty darn perfect when you think about it. But when you look back at this season so far, JT, is there a game that stands out where you feel like you knew this team could be special and, and, and be undefeated up to this point? Yeah. Um I mean, I would say the LSU game, uh, mm. just seeing how we came out that second half and coming back, we were down, I think it was down three, just coming back how we did and just absolutely dominating, um, scoring every drive, like Coach Norvell said at halftime. I just doing a little things right. It just felt like, I mean, it's time. I mean, I knew this team had a lot of potential at that time, um, but we're putting all, putting it all together. The defense is having the offenses back. The offense is having Coach Norvell's back. The special teams has been coming up big. So... I mean, I feel like we're just putting everything together, together, and um, yeah, this team still has so much potential, and it's it's really crazy to look at. Yeah, it is, and it's almost terrifying if you're another opponent on your schedule here the rest of the way. Just to think about that, because you have been playing at such a high level, and you know, I, I do want to talk about you, and I, I know that's uncomfortable. I know it's not fun because you always want to talk about how great your teammates and coaches are, but man, you've been on a tear, and, and it really has been fun to watch you this season to kind of take that next step and, and to be at your final form collegiately uh, right now. Just remind everybody what went into that journey, man, and, and how you got to this point where you're playing so well. Yeah, a lot of went in. A lot went in. I mean, a lot of support from my family and my teammates, my coaches. Um, yeah, man, it's been a journey. There's been booze. There's been bad days. There's been days where I cried in my room, didn't want to leave. Um, but, yeah, man, this came a long way. But all glory to God, all glory to my, my family, my teammates, my coaches. Was, they helped me this entire way, man. That's where we are today. Um, but, yeah, just thankful. I'm thankful for an opportunity every single day just to wake up and get better. So that's yeah. what I've been focusing on a lot, man. Can, can you peel back the curtain just for a second, man, and, and maybe talk about the conversation that you and Coach Norvell had, you know, many years ago where, where I believe you were even at a point where you're like, I need to change position. I need to do anything. And maybe a conversation. I've heard him talk about this before, but the conversation that y'all had in his office. Yeah. Um, well, when he first got here, we've had a couple of different conversations, but when he first got here, 
um, I approached them and before they really saw me throw anything like that. Um, I approached them and just said, I'm willing to play, play a different position because I didn't know what their, their plan was. And obviously at the time, I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. So um, I was willing to do anything. I just wanted to be a part of the program and be a part of Florida State and help win football games. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he told me he shut that down right away and told me he's going to believe in me and push me harder than I've ever been pushed before. Um, and we're going to build my confidence back up and I'll be one of the best quarterbacks in college football. So, I mean, they believed in me from from day one, man. Um, I don't know what they saw in me at the time because I did not see it in myself at all, but they believed in me and pushed me, and I'm so grateful for them. I think they saw this, Jordan. I think they saw the potential to be a, a possible Heisman finalist. And you mentioned, I just wanted to be at Florida State and help Florida State win football games. I know you grew up in the state of Florida, and so you guys have some massive rivalry games coming up, Miami and Florida to end the season. What does it mean as a kid from Florida to play those two games here in November where we remember November and how important are those two games to you? Uh, they're everything. Um, I, I am, I mean, I've never been a fan of either one of these teams we're about to play. <laughs> um, I'd rather playing baseball at Florida State and just going to those games and just hearing the fans out of Miami call the names call the names out to my brother and I used to sit there as a little kid and try to defend him and fight him at 10 years old um, so I remember all that type of stuff man going to the football game down in Miami when I was probably in 2012 2011 and just my brother going back and forth with the fans I mean I got my brother's back no matter what so that <laughs> stuck with me forever um so yeah man, but I'm gonna go out this week and <laughs> focus on us because it, at the end of the day it's always about us but yeah, it, it's a big game, and obviously it's different than the other games when it comes to the rivalry and then the bad blood between it. That's what it is at the end of the day. Um, so we're just got to go focus on us and dominate. Yeah, you, you really do. I mean, you, when you look at this game, it, it has to be a season of its own almost, right? It's such an intense rivalry and what it means. And even for outsiders that aren't a part of it, like you feel that and you know. Uh, I, I do want to go back a couple of years ago, man, where you walked it off, uh, won the game for your team, and, and, and after a year before where – you know, Miami beat you guys pretty good. And then you take things into your own hands, walk into the end zone, then get the two point conversion. Uh, I, I know that had to be an amazing feeling. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll remember that for the rest of my life, um, <laughs> that moment, because I feel like that was a turning point in my career. Um, hmm. Winning in that game. I mean, we were kind of down that year and just winning how we won was really big for the team, gave us a lot of confidence. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that would stick with me forever. That was everything you could dream of as a Florida State <laughs> fan growing up as being a part of a game like that, especially in winning like that. Um, so, yeah, it's a blessing for sure. I know he was out uh, with at the Pittsburgh game, and, and hopefully he's back this week. But when Mike Norvell goes to the portal and brings in a guy like Keon Coleman, who is an absolute game changer, what has it been like to play with him? And did you think he'd have this kind of impact on this team? I did. I knew from the first day, just, just texting him before I even met him in person. Um, just how he was texting and the expectations that he had. I mean, when you come to Florida State, expectations are always going to be high, and you should expect that and want that. Um, but just talking with him and hearing what he wants to win, I mean, he's a very selfless person that doesn't – I mean, if he doesn't get the ball, I mean, every receiver wants the ball at the end of the day, but he wants to win more than that, which is very mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes your job easy as a quarterback. When you can just throw the ball up in the air, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and he makes plays in the ball. So it's a quarterback's dream to have a guy like him and Johnny on opposite sides. Um, yeah, but we're blessed to have him. So blessed. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, freaky to say the least. And it looks like how quickly you guys have, you know, built that relationship. The game one, I mean, 120-something yards to him. Uh, just impressive. And that's been on absolute tear ever since. Uh, KG mentioned it, but you didn't have either one of those guys against Pittsburgh. And going to a place, uh, a, a team that, Man, they're a tough defense, a, play, a tough place to play, that grass up there, that turf. Um, and then you just look at the kind of circumstances that you guys had coming in, not having your two best players. And none of that mattered because you threw for the most you've ever thrown in your career. <laughs> How were you able to do that? What kind of mind shape or, you know, were you in there? And, you know, just to be able to do something like that without two of your best players to me is, is insane. Um, yeah, I mean, Florida State's a program where we have playmakers all over across the field we got backups that are that could be starting somewhere else so i mean when you have your opportunity you have to step up and that's why i'm so proud of this football team is guys stepped up i think kyle had 80 yards 
Jakai went for 100 and something. It's like this guy stepping up. Jakai's never had a game like that, never had an opportunity like that to go out and be the number one receiver on the football field. And that's a guy that I'm so thankful for every single day because he always has a positive mindset. And, I mean, if he doesn't get the ball one game, you never see him come up to me complaining. And that's that's like when you're a quarterback and you have guys complaining at you and coming at you, we want the ball, we want the ball. It starts getting in your head a little bit and you start forcing sure. it. And Jakai has sure. never been that person. Always has a smile on his face. So, I mean, I'm happy those guys had an opportunity to step up. And, yeah, man, I mean, I think we had eight guys touch the ball. And it's great when you can spread it around. You get freshmen in there that they are able to touch the ball. Um, so, yeah, man, it was, it was great for sure. Do you think about that? Like, do you think of, okay, you know, these two guys are out. We're going to have to, you know, go crazy here. Did you just kind of know, hey, within the offense, this guy's going to be open. I'm just going to sling it and rip it. Yeah, just trust my reads at the end of the day and trust my guys around me. That's what you have to do. I feel like some points of that game, I was trying to place the ball perfect instead of just throwing it. Um, because, I mean, when you have Johnny and Key on two big guys like that, you could throw the ball kind of anywhere and you know that they're going to have a chance at the ball. But when you have guys out, you, I feel like I was trying to be too perfect and I told Coach Novell that. I mean, just throw the ball and trust your guys. And I started doing that towards the end of the game. I'm just letting them make plays because we have a bunch of special people on this team that work really hard um, for opportunities like that. So I'm glad they stepped up. Jordan, you mentioned the booze. A couple years ago, uh, Mike Norvell's first season. And, you know, Florida State had a few down years there. But we, I think we all understood. If you know college football, you knew Florida State was going to be back. It was just a matter of when and how. Mm-hmm. What, what is it about Mike Norvell that he was able to bring this program back? And, and not just back, but top four right now, possible Heisman finalist, playoff, you know, very much in the picture. What is it about him that he was able to do this? Um, he never changed. I mean, I think that's the most special thing about him is through all the hard times and through this year, he has never changed who he is as a person, who he is, who he is as a coach. I mean, he's always pushed us hard, and he never asked for our trust. He earned it from us, and I, you can that's all you can do is just respect a man like that because he comes with the energy at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., I mean, 12. I mean, it's just crazy. I've never been around a person like that just that works so hard because he, he works incredibly hard, man. Um he doesn't get to see his family often. Obviously, the coaches are here all day. And it's just a person that just loves you no matter what. He, I mean, he may curse you out, but right after, man, he's going to make sure everything's <laughs> good. And he just, he's just a person that cares. And there's not a lot of coaches like that that are like that in college football at all. And I've been around a couple of them and heard about other ones. But, I mean, I've never met a guy that just always has the energy, um, no matter how he's feeling. I mean, he could be sick at practice. And, I see him in the back. I, no one else really notices Coach Bell when he's sick, but I kind of catch him all the time. He'll try to take a knee or like squat down for a few. He's having a headache, and he just never wants to, you to see the pain on him. So he fights through everything, um, and he'll never, he'll never ask anything from us that he won't give. And uh, I could go on and on about him, um, but yeah, he's he's a really special guy. That was something yeah. that was just really evident to me. You know, I was I was. Greatly appreciative a couple of years ago to see you guys in practice when we had that ACC road show in the summer two years ago. And man, he, he's like the Energizer Bunny. I mean, that dude goes and he loves it. I mean, he genuinely loves what he does, loves being a teacher, loves being a, a coach out there. And I think that that is just so clear. And, you know, one reason why I think because he's so passionate, I've, I've heard some whispers, man. I, I go on these different radio shows or TV, whatever. And people are like, well, you know, Miami's down and you know, North Alabama and Florida's down. And, you know, is FSU going to slip up? I said, listen, I know these guys. I know they're not going to do that. But from your perspective, JT, why is this team's focus so greater than just who's in front of you? It is about yourself and moving forward in these games. Yeah, because we know um, we compete, uh, compete against ourselves every week. I mean. If we don't make mistakes, if we own the ball, we do the little things right, we'll go out and dominate every single week. And we know that as a fo- football team because we know how much talent we have across the board. Um, but we always emphasize it's all about us just because, man, I mean, every week I always say us versus us. I don't really like to write the other team's name down because at the end of the day, that's what it is, man. Mm. Um, we have, like, just guys across the field. and We have so much confidence as a football team. And the best thing about us is it's a very humble football team. Um, and I think that's – a really, really big thing, and it's huge because our heads never get too high and they never get too low, man. We're always just kind of this even kill, like steady, man. I think that's the most special thing about this team. We're very, very confident, but, I mean, very respectful at the same time. I think that's a huge thing because I've been on teams before where we were very confident and we don't win a lot of football games, and we also had Mm -hmm. a lot of talent too. So I just think it's a bunch of humble people on 
a team that just want to see each other succeed. That's a good way to put it. Well, I was going to ask you about Miami, but I know it's it's FSU versus FSU, as you said. So I'm going to ask you a more fun question because we know you're you're like to fish. You like to get out there and yes. fish. Maybe not as much during the season. You're busy. But we also know you like to throw out some country music. What have you been listening to, JT? I'm curious. I want to pick your brain. Honestly, I've been listening to Zach Bryan a lot. Yeah. That's been like, that's been like my guy um, the past two months. That's all I've been listening to. Every time I get in my car, every single time. I'm playing a driver. <laughs> I mean, every single time I get in the car, jamming He's out. He's big right now, Mac. He's big. Yeah. No, no question, no question. I love that. I love that. Well, JT, man, last one for you. Um, and just looking at this team, and and we we've danced around it. You you've kind of mentioned it. Um, taking that next step to playing your perfect game. What what does that take? And not you, but Florida State. What 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 do you need to see that you can be satisfied after a game and be like, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, there's not one thing I can put my finger on. I mean, it just comes down to, I mean, how we practice. I feel like practice translates to the field a lot and how we do everything is how we do anything is how we do everything. So, I mean, school, how you treat people walking around the stadium. I feel like everything translates to that. So I just feel like we just have to have one good week where, man, we're focused on just the day in front of us and winning the day in front of us. I mean, then it's going to translate to the field. I feel like the focus penalties that we have and, Putting ourselves in second and long, third and long is always the toughest thing to do. So I feel like we need to stay out of situations like that. Obviously, the defense has been holding their own, so it comes down to the offensive side of the ball, and that's what we have to focus on. I was putting points up on the board and owning the ball at the same time. We can't have turnovers. Um, that's the first thing we talk about every week is owning the ball. Because if we do that, I mean, we'll put ourselves in a good position. Getting the first first down, we always talk about that. Our percentage is very so high important. when we get our first yeah. first down. Yeah. So just – I mean, just little things like that, man. Just having positive plays, eliminate the negatives. There's just a lot of things we could do as an offense that will kind of just help this this team take the next step. Yeah. All right. So 45 to zero, 500 yards of offense, no penalties, no turnovers. And Jordan, will be happy. I understand. I understand. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, hey, man, we're excited for you. Good luck this weekend. Um, and I, I don't know if we'll see you again in person, hopefully in Charlotte for sure. But uh, excited mm-hmm. to keep you guys uh, rolling on the strength. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Nice to see y'all. Thanks again to Jordan Travis for taking the time. One of the most um, in high demand quarterbacks, players in the country, possible Heisman finalist, should be a Heisman finalist. But, you know, people are crazy. So we will see what happens there. <laughs> Mac, before we continue to talk some football here and break down Florida State Miami, give a little primer before we break down all of the games on Friday's episode, we did release a special episode, special episode alert yesterday, Tuesday. And to get you ready for Virginia Tech, Iowa women's hoops on Thursday, tomorrow, 8 p.m. ESPN2, Mac and I will be in Charlotte with ACC Network covering that game. Mac will also be there covering the Louisville game, have some breakdown of that on all ACC. So we're just converging football and basketball together, Mac, which is what we love. So if you haven't listened to that episode, finish this one, okay, and then go back and listen to that one. Please. That's what you need to do, people. Great conversations. Was a lot of fun and great insight. And good to see my friend KG with the basketball hat on, okay? Mm. It's crossover season. We're going back and forth. We're all over the place here. Um, KG, first of all, unbelievable interview with Jordan. Love that dude. Uh, you know, he, he's just super great at what he does on the field, off the field. We were joking a little bit before uh, we started going on the episode here, and I, and I asked him just how different campus was. And he said mm. the buzz is just insane. You know, it's so much fun. And then I thought about I was like, there's no way you're still going to classes. Are you in online graduate school? He said, yes, but sometimes I'll just go and walk or drive around campus just to see it. And it's, uh, it's super incredible. And then this thought jumped into my, my mind, KG, who is FSU most likely playing in the ACC championship? Louisville. Where did Jordan Travis start his career? Louisville. Wow. What a full seat. What a full circle moment. That's nuts. Very full circle. It's going to be interesting to see mindset wise if, if he even like, I mean, he's been at Florida State so long. Like this is his fifth year at Florida State, but still that's pretty wild. Pretty well, crazy. and a completely different staff at Louisville too. Yeah. 100%, and completely 100%. different players. So, But still, them fans uh, don't forget. <laughs> well, and people sometimes forget too that Jordan Travis is technically a transfer to Florida right. State because he's that's been right. at Florida State for 84 years. <laughs> he has been there for quite a while. Great number. I love, love that he 
I say this lovingly, is so old that he has, you know, just online graduate classes, which is the life. And yes. that's he said also sometimes he just rolls around in a golf cart no, on Mondays no. to check out the scene to see what's <laughs> happening on campus. The biggest question <laughs> is, is it his golf cart because uh -huh. NIL, this dude's just loaded or... Is he just jump into to Coach Norbell's and just buzz around campus? That's what we should have asked. Like, what's the route? Like, what are you doing when you do that? <laughs> the the most important thing on almost any college campus, if you have a golf cart, if you have yes. access to a golf cart, you're golden. You are That's living you because it's so yeah. hard to drive around college campuses, traffic, and all these things. Right. If you have a golf cart, man. I'd say a moped too. That that, that was probably yeah. one of my biggest regrets about college was not getting a moped. Mac. How would you have been on a moped? Listen, I could get a big one. Listen, those things can go like 60 miles an hour. I get a big old moped. I don't, d d was, me, was, me. little Vespa. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> was Coach Woody okay with you guys using mopeds? It always seemed like an they accident all have waiting to happen. Right, right. And some actually did happen. It was actually more my, uh, my dad. My dad did not want me to have a moped. He was like terrified of, you know, just getting hit by one. So I think that's smart. I think that's pretty smart. Whatever. Okay. Let's get uh, to our game here, Mac. Number four, Florida State is hosting Miami this Saturday, 3.30 p.m. in Doak Campbell. Florida State, as of Tuesday when we're recording this, is a 14.5 point favorite, and the total is set at 50.5. Miami is now 6-3 and three on the year. So, I mean, definitely an improvement from last season, but they have had their struggles. They have lost three of their last five, and Mac, their two wins in this last stretch have been in overtime. They haven't yeah. won a game in regulation since September, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Now, credit, they found a way to beat Clemson and beat Virginia in games where they were very much, you know, could have lost those games. But then they're coming off this NC State game. And we talked about that on Monday. Miami really struggled in that game, Mac. Tyler Van Dyke yeah. threw three picks. They had four total turnovers. NC State's defense was really good. If they do that, if they have turnovers in Dope Campbell, this could get really ugly. Yeah, yeah. No, there's there's no question about it. And you mentioned all those games. One uh, kind of correlation with those last five games is a lot of picks. A lot of mm -hmm. picks by TVD. Ten in the last five games. Had multiple in every single game. And that's hard, especially against a team like this uh, who thrives, number one, at home if you give them the ball. But also that defense, if they get going and get turnovers, then that offense is only going – to pick up. So that's a real concern for me. And I've seen it. I've heard it on radio and, and social media and everywhere about should Miami make a change? And I think the question that the, the coaches have to ask themselves is, is TVD the best you know possible way for us to win? Is, is there a better mm -hmm. option or is he the best option? And a lot of fans are going to point to that Clemson game and uh, you know say, look, look what this young cat did. He beat the Tigers, which is accurate and true. But I, I, that game in itself, I don't want. I don't think you want to use that as right. you know your your facts and and your kind of foundational piece here. Um, just given the up and down season that Clemson is on right now, so it'll be fascinating to watch that for that perspective. KG, what does Miami do at the quarterback position? Also, Miami beat Clemson. I would say because of their defense, because of how they ran the ball. Emory Williams in that game was twenty four of thirty three, which a good completion percentage, but only for one fifty one. Yeah. touchdown a pick he still averaged 4.6 yards per attempt so it's not like he lit things up no in that game yeah. I think the real question is is Tyler Van Dyke healthy right. and if he if you feel like a healthy Emory Williams gives you a better chance than a beat up TVD who has been turning the ball over like crazy I, I could see them at least having that discussion this week yeah. I think it's you got to look at it and see sure it'll be interesting It'll be very interesting. But looking at the Florida State side, I'm hopeful they're going to get Keon back. Hopeful they're going to get Johnny back, and this offense will be you know, at, at relatively full strength. I think what's so good about what you have seen with Johnny Wilson out and, of course, Keon this last game out is other guys have had to step up. So now mm -hmm. it's just even more of threats. Like you, you cannot double-team anybody because they're just going to go to the next guy. They're just going to find the next guy. And I, I was very interested. That's kind of why I asked Jordan – you know, the question about finding those targets, not having your targets and, you know, what, what kind of, you know, feel did you have for the game? And what he said was, I just trust my reads. And so what that tells me is now he's even more confident in those other guys, not just Keon, not just, uh, you, you know, the, what they can do moving the football there. And so 
if Johnny's double teamed and he's the first read, he has no problem moving quickly to the next guy. If Keon's the read and there's a high safety over the top of him, he has no – it's not It's not like a reservation. It's just, nope, not open, bam, next guy, wide open, screaming downfield. And, and so that to me is dangerous. As strange mm-hmm. as this sounds, that might be the best thing that happened to Florida yeah. State. Those guys not be available going into this run that I think that they're about to go on starting Saturday afternoon. Deuce Span was also out in that game too. So yep. they were missing quite a few guys. And the confidence that a guy like Ja'Kai Douglas gets from that game, right. who Jordan yeah. Travis was talking about, it might be a blessing in disguise. Now, as yeah. long as these guys come back, right? I feel like if they're still out for Miami, then we got some more issues. How injured right. are they? But we'll see if they're back for Miami and, and for this big game, this rivalry game, Mac. When you look at the number, and we'll talk more about this game on Friday as well, 14 and a half. Here, here's the thing. I'm a little frustrated with FSU because they did not cover at Pitt. Now, mm-hmm. we mentioned all the guys that were out. I'm could've. only frustrated. They could have covered, though. They were yeah. on the goal line. They could have covered. <laughs> only frustrated with covering, not with their overall performance, That's obviously. Right. <laughs> but outside of that, they've actually been really good against the spread. So when I look at 14 and a half and I see all of Miami's issues, I know this Miami defense has had some bright spots. Ruben Bain, monster. The yeah. secondary has been good. Yeah. I'm leaning towards FSU covering though right now, Mac. Mm, I tell you what, I would feel, listen, you ha- I know you remember this. I'm saying you have to remember. Rivalry game, like throw it all out. Yep. You never yep. know. You never know. But it is at home. And it also, I wish it was 13 and a half. 13 and a I half, know. no brainer. I'm feeling great. 14 and a half, I'm like, mm, I wanted 14. That's the number I wanted. Uh, we'll see. I'm reserving all rights till Friday. That's what I'm going to do here. This is just, it's classic Vegas. It is classic They put that Vegas. hook on there for you, Mac. No question. All I know, that environment's going to be crazy. It's going to be a picture, perfect day. Uh, wish we were there, wanted to see it in person, but, you know, it is what it is. It gets called up to the big dogs. And uh, Florida State, you know, continues to, to roll this season and play at a super high level. So, again, huge shout-out to Jordan Travis. Huge shout-out to Derek Satterfield. More on this game on Friday. We will break it all down there. KG mentioned it early. Go check out yesterday's episode. So much fun. A massive women's basketball game coming up between Virginia Tech and Iowa. Oh, wait. Let me mention this, Mac. Uh, actually, massive uh, evening of hoops tomorrow. The Florida State women play yeah. Tennessee. Come on, Noles. I believe it is on E2 before the <laughs> Iowa-Virginia Tech game. There you so go. make sure you watch that. I think the Florida State women are going to have a very good year. Come so on. just because we probably have some Florida State fans listening, tune in. <laughs> tune in Thursday. Tune into that. This is a great day of hoops all day long there. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Big shout out to Ingles. Thank them for, for all their help and support here. And we need your help and your support. Go over to YouTube if you're listening to us somewhere else. We need you to subscribe, leave some comments. We have so much fun over here on this channel. Of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe there as well. We appreciate your support. But until next time, we'll see y'all. Thank you